In the previous video, we talked about an if statement to create a situation. In this video, we will dive into many more of the other conditional statements so that we can create multiple scenarios and a more interesting program. So the example that we did previously, right? We created an if statement where if x is more than 200, right? Change the color of the circle to yellow. So we use one condition to create one scenario. But what if we want to create more scenarios? What can we do? I'm going to show you two ways in this video. The first way is with an if else statement. An if else statement is actually very similar to an if statement here. What we have here right now, it says that if this condition is true, then perform this line of code. But with an if and else statement, we basically say if the condition is true, you do this. But if it is not true, you do that. So you only have one condition, but you create two scenarios. So let's look at the syntax. The first part is the same thing, right? So it's if with the condition within a parenthesis, and then you have a curly bracket, and within that you have the commands that you want to execute when the condition is true. And then you have else, and you have another set of curly brackets, right? And underneath that, those are the commands that you want to be called when the condition is false. So as you can see here, it's either the commands within the first part or the second part will be called because the condition will be either true or false and nothing else. So if we come back to our example here, I'm going to change the way that we write the if statement from if to an if else statement. So instead of just having the fill of this color salmon be here 100% of the time, what I want to do is saying that like, if x is more than 200, then color it yellow. Else, right? Else means what? Else means if x is less than or equals to 200, then color it salmon. So if we click play, nothing will change because in this way of writing, it's still doing the exact same thing, right? But it's basically say if x is less than or equals to 200, then color it salmon. However, if x is more than 200, color it yellow. In the previous video, it always color it salmon, but when x is more than 200, then you color it yellow. So you just kind of replace or pick up a new color. Here, you can only have two scenarios with one condition, right? What if you actually want to have many more conditions and many more scenarios? You can use a conditional statement called if, else if, and else statement. Let's first look at the syntax. So if you see here, the first part and the last part are exactly the same as an if else statement, right? But with an else if statement, you can put more conditions. So you, as you can see here, I have condition one, condition two, condition three, and then else. The most important thing that you need to understand and remember here is that only one set of instructions underneath the curly brackets will be called. And which one will be called? When the condition is true, the commands under that curly bracket will be called. And then after that, we will leave the conditional statement at all. Let's say that condition one is true. Then the commands underneath condition one will be called. And then we leave the statement. But let's say condition one is false. Condition two is true. Then we call the thing underneath condition two, right? But condition three is also true. But because we already satisfy the conditional statement because condition two is already true, we leave the conditional statement altogether, right? And what if all of the conditions are false? Then the commands underneath else will be called. Instead of only creating just two scenarios here, what I want to do now is that I want to split the canvas into four sections and I want it to change the colors based on whichever section the circle is located at. So what I want to do is that I'm going to say, if x is more than 100, then color it yellow. Else, if x is more than 200, color it, let's do salmon. 
else if x is more than 300 then color it let's do how about red and then else so else would happen when x is between 0 and 100 right let's color it how about white okay and then I'm gonna click play white yellow oh wait it didn't change Okay, let's try again. White, yellow. What's going on? What did I do wrong? So I did something quite severely wrong, right? The thing that I wanted you to focus earlier, what did I say? I say that if one condition is true, then the command underneath that will be called. And then we just leave the conditional statement altogether, right? So if you see here, the conditions that I put here, x is more than 100, x is more than 200. So if this condition were to be true, that x is more than 200, then x is more than 100 will always be true. So we have overlapping conditions right now, right? So what we want is that we actually want to say if x is more than 100, but less than less than or equal to 200, right? We want to write two Boolean expressions in one condition. So in order for us to do that, we need to use this thing called logical operator. There are a total of two logical operators. The first one is AND, and then the second one is OR. Let's look at AND first. So the symbol for an AND logical operator is two ampersands. All the Boolean expressions within this condition have to have a result or an outcome of true for this whole condition to be true. If one of the Boolean expression is false, then the whole condition is false. But with an OR logic operator, if only one of the Boolean expressions has an outcome of true, then the whole expression is true. The only case that it will be false is when all the Boolean expressions have an outcome of false. Let's give this a try. So we want to say if x is more than 100 and x is less than or equals to 200, right? And for this is and x is less than or equals to 300. We don't need anything for this one because um, it will go off the screen anyway. Then let's play. white yellow, salmon, red. Okay, exactly what we want. So I want to show you another example before we end this video. So if you see our example here, the circle, when it hits the edge, right, what happens? It just go all the way out, right? And it is because the x location or the x value is more than the size of the canvas now. So what I want to do now is I want to create a condition where if the x location of the circle is more than or equals to the width of the canvas, then move back the other direction. So first, I'm going to create a new variable called dx, which is a direction for the x direction of 1, right? And I'm going to change x plus 1 to be x plus dx. And I'm going to say if x is more than or equals to width, right? Width is a built-in variable within P5.js that has a value equals to whatever you set as the size of the width of the canvas. Okay, so if x is more than or equals to width, then I want dx to be equals to dx times negative 1, right? I want it to move to the other direction. Okay, let's try it. Boing. Boing. Okay, so it did exactly what we wanted it to do, but now what? Now it moves off the screen to the left. So what we want to do is that we want to also write another conditional statement. Say if x is less than or equals to 0, right? We want the x condition to also 
Oh, <laughs> the reason that it's not moving or it's moving like this is because x is set at zero. So this condition is true all the time. It's keep moving. So if it's at one, start with one. Then now it hits the right side and then it bounces. It bounces back. And now when it hits the left side, hopefully it bounces back too. Okay. But what you see here is that I wrote two if statements that actually has the same exact command, right? What I can do is that I can use an or operator, which is these lines here, right? And I just put this condition here. The reason that I have to use or logical operator and not and is because what? Because only one of this only one of these boolean expressions can be true at a time, right? Because x cannot be more than or equals to with at the same time as x is less than or equals to zero. But it can happen um, at different times. And with an or logical op operator, we only need it to be true in one of the boolean expressions. So let's try that. There you go. So now you see how we can write different kinds of conditional statements to create different scenarios and make our program more interesting. Why don't you give it a try and instead of just having it bouncing back between the x axis, right? Just try it with the y axis. How would that work? Or try to create different scenarios, painting the circles different ways, or doing different conditions where, you know, if this happens, then you create these different shapes. Give it a try and see what happens.